Hey there, it's the shooting guy. Thanks a lot for viewing today. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing, man. Appreciate it a lot. If you're just stopping by today, consider subscribing. We do a whole bunch of fun things here at the Shooting Guy Compound, and uh, we like to bring videos to you on how to do things, hunting, shooting, uh, knives, outdoors, camping, hiking, all that kind of stuff. So consider joining. We appreciate it, even though you just stopped by today. Anyway, a couple videos ago, you saw us working on some camp stoves. Now, why am I doing this? Well, ammo's too expensive right now, and I've just made a choice to not shoot off my ammo. You know, I'm going to conserve. And so I would recommend to you all, conserve your ammo at this point. This will probably pass where ammo prices will come back down. Or if we don't fight hard enough, maybe ammo will just be gone altogether. And then in that case, you're going to have to learn to conserve your ammo anyway. So start learning now. Anyways, look at this. We were working on this the other day. Totally melted down, although it burned the best of all of them. Then we had this one, a um, little ginger ale can, it's a little stubby. Took two of them, squished one on top of the other. Same kind of thing. We put the holes down here, it started to melt. Very odd. This was one that we made uh, previously, and two Coke cans squished together works quite nicely. Put a, fill it up, put the penny in there, and by the way, inside there is uh, spun fiberglass which uh, works as wicking and it does a very good job. So, so far this was good. However, on my latest video that I'll put a link to, you'll see this one. And we made it out of a Venom can. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't taste good. But, as a little stove, it worked quite good. So today, I'm just going to show you how to make one. We're going to start off with a Coors Light can. Why is that? I don't like this stuff. I gotta be honest with you, if anything, this is the kind of stuff I enjoy. Yay! It's more than a beer, it's a meal, right? But this aluminum can is very good. The aluminum itself is very, very thick, much thicker than, say, a Coca Cola can that we've cut up here. This is very thin, but this holds up the heat much better and it's a little more durable. Adds a little weight to the overall package when you're done, but it's the price you pay for durability. You take one of these, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut it off just about here, and when we're done, it's going to look like this. I happen to have a bandsaw, and if you have one of these, this will work great. Make sure that it's up high enough so you can get that bottle underneath there. I've got a miter. That works really good because you can get it in here. Set your fence, which we'll do in just a second. Chop it off. I recommend, because this is kind of a thick aluminum or any aluminum, if you're cutting with a bandsaw, use uh, hearing protection. Always protect your ears. I'm going to slip the ears on right now and uh, set my fence first. When we cut this with the bandsaw, we're going to cut just after the round, the, the hump. So see how it's tapered here? We're going to cut right down in here. Lock this baby down, stick my miter in. Put it up against the fence. Turn it on. Here we go. All right. Part one. I've got a half round file, flat on one side, curved on the other. And I'm going to come inside here and just kind of take off all the burrs on the inside. Go all the way around. All right, on to the next part. <laughs> Alrighty, so now here's the uh, bottom half of the can. We're just gonna estimate, keep in mind there's a little bit of a, uh, dippy, a, dap. a dippy dap there, yeah, as Shooting Kid says. So we're probably gonna come, you know, we don't want it to, we want it to just come down and meet. And we're gonna trim this a little later, but I'm gonna cut it on the bandsaw first. So it's probably gonna be right around here, right around the bottom of the L. We're just gonna cut it off so we have some room, and then we'll take it from there. And I'm going in. Ooh, I guess my miter uh, needs to scoot over, and I can't. Mm. So we hold it, and we're careful. You ready? All right, on to the next part. Now that we have that cut, 
and it's pretty even. We stick that in there and we see that we have a bit of a lip and uh, that's probably a bit of too much lip. So we're going to trim that down and I've got some trusty scissors that work pretty well to trim that and I'm going to do that in just a minute and I'll show you how that's done. So I'm just cutting that so I have about 3 sixteenths of an inch of a lip and maybe just a little less. All right, before we go any further, I'm going to uh, cut some notches. And the reason why we do that is, if you see on the finished product, can you see down inside of there? Is there enough light? Yep. There's some holes in there. That's so when you fill this up, the, whole, the, uh, the, the alcohol or the fuel can escape into the outer wall and uh, fill this thing up in here. So you've got to file this down. So here we go. All I'm going to do is take a triangular file. Make a notch there, turn it, and uh, turn it 90, 90 degrees, line it up again, and do that. Put some notches in. Simple, right? So now we got the can, we got the inner wall inserted all the way down, it's pretty flush, and instead of doing a roll, like some guys will take a a bottom of another can and make a die out of it and press it down and do all that elaborate stuff which works great and it looks really good I gotta confess I've seen those I just decided because I've tried it a few times and I was unsuccessful at least half the time so I've decided use brute force I got two thumbs <laughs> fits in there nice and snug I'm just gonna roll it over with my hand like this and as you can see just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. And then if you want a nice good crease, you can take your pliers. And actually I'm going to go over it with my fingers just a little bit more. Give it a nice rolled edge. And you just come around and give it a gentle squeeze on all the high points until you make a nice crease. And you just keep going around, and when you do, it'll get pretty nice and flush like this one is. Twenty years later. Okay. A couple more. It's nice and flush. Nice and smooth top. Just like that. Looks really good. Now, next step. Get your trusty uh, blue painter's tape because it comes off nice and easy. And all I'm going to do is put it along the top edge so I have something to drill into and something to mark and something to drill into. So I'll take that, we'll come all the way around just like that. Cut that off. Okay, there you go. Then take your Sharpie and start measuring it off. And so what I want to do is start here and straight across from that one I'm going to do another one. And you just keep working away at that. Go at 90 degrees from this and that. And you can just kind of eyeball it. Okay. Do it again. Come in the middle of that. Just like that. Just like that. Eyeball it right in the middle of there. Just like that. Like that. So you just keep going. There you go. I'm going to try something a little different. I'm actually going to drill into these and then I'm going to drill a, a set of holes down here, down a little bit lower. Okay. And once I've done this and I've drilled, then I kind of have a die or a template, I should say, for another set. See? Come back in just a minute and I'll show you what I've done. We drew our vertical line so we know where we're going to mark off individually the holes. And then we have two circles, one at the top. So the ones that start from up here and come down, I'm going to drill a hole there. 
and these that are not touching the top I'm going to drill down here so I'll have staggered holes across this whole thing and we're going to do that with our drill press 16th inch and I'm ready to drill just load up the drill into the drill truck and you're ready to go all right now you want to make sure that when you're drilling you don't drill through this inner wall you're just drilling through the top wall so you're going to have to do it by feel okay always use eye protection Okay, got the first set of holes, now I'm going to go down to this line down here and do the second set. Got the holes drilled. Now, I would recommend when you take this tape off, when you find the end of it here, that you save the tape because it's now your template for where to drill your next little stove. Just like that, save it someplace temporarily. I'm just going to put it right there and I'll know where to find it later. And before I uh, do anything else, I'm going to do another quick check. Looks like I uh, have a hole that's semi clogged, so I'm going to fix that up. There you go. Just going to clean up the, the holes just a little bit so I get some good jet action through them. It looks pretty good. Now, the idea was to stagger the holes so that when I put a, a, a pot on top, there's enough gap between the top of the pot being there and these holes so there's some oxygen and, there, and the flame is able to leak out. All right. So there you go. Just making sure it's all crimped down. Now for the fun part. We're going to fill it with alcohol and set it on fire. SLX denatured alcohol. Yes. This works great for your camp stove. Because it says flammable. Yep. These things are called strike anywhere matches. Meaning, you can strike them anywhere. We're going to pour some alcohol in there. It's just a, about an ounce of alcohol. I'm just going to pour enough to go to the top of the little line, there. Little line thing there. And then it'll go down because it's filling up the sides. It all equals out because with the little holes that we put in there. I'm going to get this out of the way so it doesn't catch on fire. Fire! Scout's proud. Scout's proud. Yep. So, let's do this. Look at that. All right, give it a whirl. Here it goes. So it's going to take a few seconds to prime up and heat up that alcohol in there until boiling temperature. And as we've talked about before, when it does, it starts to vaporize through the little holes that we drilled on the side. And... Uh, it works like a little stove. How long does it take? And after a little while you'll see the flames coming out the little holes on the side. That's because the alcohol is beginning to vaporize. There you go folks. Little camp stove and you're ready to go. And with my experiments uh, before, oh in about five minutes you can boil a couple cups of water that you put in a pot over there. So I hope that was helpful. Go out there and make yourself a camp stove and uh, don't set your house on fire! Alright, yeah. It's just another excuse for shooting kid to play with matches. Wait, hey. But it's a nice controlled environment. We should be okay. And I'm a voice guy. Alright, it's the shooting guy. Along with the shooting kid. And our boiling alcohol stove, we want to say, God bless you, God bless America, and may America bless God. Excuse me, you're rolling.